<laughs> Quiet Just chair. <laughs>
Uh, but I was the least excited about this bike out of all of them when I had them built up and sitting side by side. It kind of looks the most traditional, especially compared to the Spur and the Ranger, these big long things, they just look more aggressive. And then I got it out on the trail. Holy shit. <laughs> so the first trail we went to, to film on is like this smooth, very fast, burmy thing full of rollers. And this thing, the amount of speed that it can carry over that terrain, and especially in those corners, these cross country tires, I mean, they're not super, super grippy. You can get them to slide. And on this bike, it felt like the tires were telling me like exactly when they were about to break traction in those corners. And the bike was just giving me these feet up slides. It felt amazing. Yeah, even yeah. though it's consistent tires across all the bikes, it yeah. felt, felt really different on this bike, basically. Yeah, I would say in that sort of terrain, it's almost like this bike talks more like, you know, it, it sounds <laughs> you, there's corny. There's more feedback. Yeah, there's the more trail. feedback from the bike. I was sliding and laughing and having the most fun. What about when they got to more rowdy trails? Well, then it's a little bit different story when things get rough. The Ranger and that transition spur, they feel more capable. They feel like they have more traction in those sorts of moments. Um, they're not getting pitched around. So like, picture yourself coming down a trail and you have a, you know, a sort of long left hand, roof, rooty rough corner. The bike, it doesn't quite hold the line. You know, it's like duh, 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 doing this. Right. I mean, the things only have a hundred and something millimeters of travel. Of course they are, they're cross country bikes. Yeah. Whereas, the spur and the revel, they just stay planted and they hold that line more and you could be calmer because of that. Since we're talking about suspension, what's the story with the Epic Evo? Well, it's actually the same story at the back of this bike as it is with a lot of our bikes. Uh, we're seeing some pretty impressive stuff here and I think that the combination of these all new shocks uh, better understanding of suspension. It's letting designers create bikes that have just a little bit of travel that it's still supple on the top, supportive in the middle. So they do a lot with very little travel. Exactly. It might not be a pure XC race bike, but we still want to know how fast it is. How did it do on your time lapse? First overall for the entire loop, which is pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it owned all the other bikes on the climb. That's where it rate up most of its time. It was third on the descent. Um, so sort right of in, in the this, middle. Yeah, sort of in this middle ground. And that's actually how I feel about the bike as well. Mm -hmm. You have the Ranger and the Spur over here, you know, ready for more, ready to go a little faster. And then you have this, which is probably just a little back from that, but still far more capable than yeah, if you're doing ever a, should be. a race, it would be probably yeah, the first choice. Yeah, exactly, yeah. We should probably talk about the efficiency test as well. Your yeah. favorite? Yeah, I'm still having nightmares of all those trips up the gravel road. Uh, the Evo did pretty well. Um, so the test included all the bikes, Sarah's cross-country race bikes and my downcountry bikes, and it was middle of the pack. Who would have thought? It was on the same second as five or six other bikes. Uh, it was actually five seconds behind her racy epic with the brain. So what were kind of the standouts on this bike for you? Well, it's S-Works, so... Got everything, <laughs> everything hard to complain, out. right? Yeah. <laughs> the big thing are these wheels. These are those Revolve wheels. I think they're 1,240 grams. They feel invisible on the trail. Like, you just think about pushing down on the pedals and the bike jumps forward, especially with these light tires on here. It is... No it, rolling resistance. Yeah, yeah. It makes you feel extremely fit. Mm -hmm. uh, drivetrain is axis, zero issues there. I love this axis stuff. You just push the button and it shifts. There's no thinking involved. And a lot of times when you're breathing through your eyeballs and you're trying to get up something quickly and... You I don't want to have to think. Yeah, I don't have time to think. <laughs> I can't think. I'm doing all the thinking I can do. Um, two things that I would change though, it does have an axis seat post. I think it's 150 mil drop on this large. I wish I had more travel. Mm -hmm. I think the bike deserves more travel. I don't want the seat there. I want it gone. I yeah. don't want to feel it. Another standout, it has four piston brakes. Oh. It's a 21 pound XC-ish bike with four piston brakes. You know, somewhere right now, Casimir is like, that's what it should have. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think the bike like this needs four piston brakes, but no excuses. Everybody can slow down. Couple little nitpicky things there about the components. What about the pros? Like what were some of your favorite things about this bike overall? Well, I really like how it does kind of strike that middle ground of like, I'm still an XC race bike, you know, cause the transition and the Rebel are definitely not. Mm -hmm. And neither is the Yeti. This thing, it still feels like an XC race bike, 
made extremely capable. So, I mean, those days when you want to cover a lot of ground and do it fast, this thing for sure. Mm -hmm. I think Specialized missed a beat when it came to specking the cockpit. I think they should have gone with a wider handlebar, longer dropper seat post, uh, that kind of thing. And then I should also mention again that the front triangle, it's the same as Sarah's Racy Epic. And on one hand, it gives it that sort of air of cross country capable that I like, that you want if you're gonna ride a lot and cover a lot of ground. But on the other hand, it doesn't have that stability that a longer slacker bike does. So what are your final thoughts and who do you think should really buy this bike? So the ideal Epic Evo owner is probably the kind of person who chases those uphill KOMs. Mm -hmm. You know, there's still a lot of you out there, I know, but definitely doesn't shy away from chasing those downhill KOMs as well. And he or she might be doing that over a 10,000 foot day, spanning days. 70 kilometers and yeah. So the ideal Evo owner is somebody who basically does it all and really prioritizes fitness regardless of wanting to do it all still. All right, so that is it for Specialized Epic Evo. It's cross country made capable. Stay tuned for more field test videos and roundtable discussions coming at you.